and welcome to lesson 3.3a. We're going to learn about sine and cosine function values today. How much fun is that? Now, a lot of it is memorization stuff. you got to practice and you got to put it in your brain. And it's that simple. But I'm going to show you where everything comes from. We're going to start with the 45-45 special right triangle, which if you never learned about the special right triangles, maybe you should take a pause and go search this up in uh, YouTube. 7.2 special right triangles and 7.3 special right triangles. And Sully made two videos there to get you all set so you can learn about that. So if you've never done that, you're going to need those videos. But I'm going to relate this to AP pre-calc from our geometry. Geometry, we only use degrees, right? So we draw a 45-45 triangle, 45-45, and then we label the sides. And the special right triangle has side lengths of 1, 1, and radical 2. And that radical 2 is on the hypotenuse. Well, that's the same thing we have over here, except we're not dealing in degrees anymore. We have to start thinking in radians. And so if we have this angle here, which is pi over 4, that's 45 degrees. Then we have legs of length 1, and the hypotenuse is a radical 2. So if I want to figure out the sine of pi over 4, I know that the sine based on Sokotoa is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So from this triangle, the opposite would be 1, and the hypotenuse would be radical 2. But... I have to rationalize that. Let's be rational. So I multiply it by radical 2 over radical 2, and I get a final answer of radical 2, 1 times radical 2 is radical 2, over radical 2 times radical 2 is a 2. I get radical 2 over 2. And that's the sign of pi over 4. And as I said, it's to your advantage to put that in your brain right now so that we can just recall it as quickly as possible later. Now let's look at the cosine of pi over 4. Same thing, right, except it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So the best part about this is the adjacent side is the same as the opposite side. So you get the same 1 over radical 2, which will, after you rationalize it, turn into radical 2 over 2 again. It's the same. Well, that's easy. So now I know that pi over 4 for the sine and the cosine is radical 2 over 2. So I can look at a unit circle. And I can start figuring out and labeling this unit circle. Here we have the point 1, 0. I'm just going to label all of the points first. Uh, that are on the axes. So this point here would be 0, 1, right? We know that. 0, 1. This would be negative 1, 0. And down here would be 0, negative 1. Easy peasy. And I also know that pi over 4, if we were to make uh, an angle in standard position, pi over 4 would be right here. That's about 45 degrees, right? But we're thinking in radians. And I want to know what you know the values of this coordinate point are. Well, if you remember from our last lesson that for a unit circle, which this is because the radius is equal to 1, that the cosine of theta equals x and the sine of theta equals y. So if I just put the cosine of theta, we just figured this out, right, back here? We know the cosine is radical 2 over 2 and the sine is also radical 2 over 2. So this point is radical 2 over 2 comma radical 2 over 2. All right, easy enough. Okay, I cleaned that up a little bit. And my next step is I'm going to go around this unit circle. And I'm going to uh, label all the different angle measurements right, in radians. I'm not going to use degrees. So this would be 45, this would be 90. But I'm going to go by radians. So the way I'm going to do that, this has been cut into pi over 4s. I mean, each slice here is an equal size. And so this is 1 pi over 4. That means that here we have 2 pi over 4. If I write that out, 2 pi over 4... Wait a second, that 2 and 4 will cancel. That'll give me a 2 on the bottom. This is equal to pi over 2. Okay, it's the same as 2 pi over 4, right? But it's been reduced. And then guess what? This is this is 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. And this angle right here would be 4 pi over 4. But 4 pi over 4 is just pi, right? This would be 5 pi over 4. And then 6 pi over 4. But 6 pi over 4 is just 3 pi over 2 because I'm just reducing that 6 and 4. And then we get what? That's 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and now 8 pi over 4, which is really, you know, this is either 0 or it's 2 pi. It's both. It's 0 and 2 pi, right? Okay, so I've labeled all my angles here. And so we also labeled this point, which is radical 2 over 2 and radical 2 over 2. Well, then the rest of the circle comes really easy. All I have to do is look at the reflection here. Like, I know that this point is the same distance away in the x direction 
as this point is. But instead of being positive, it would be negative. So this would be the point negative 2 radical 2. And it has the same height as this point over here. So it has the same y value. That's easy to figure out. So there's some symmetry here in this unit circle. I can take the same idea and then bring you know, these coordinates down here. Except, what do we got? It's got the same x coordinate. So we have radical 2 over 2. But the y coordinate should be negative now because it's going down instead of up. So this would be the point uh, radical 2 over 2, comma, negative radical 2 over 2. And then if you haven't guessed it, this point right here, you can either move this one over or move this one down, but you get negative radical 2 over 2, comma, negative radical 2 over 2. And that's it. I'm able to label the entire unit circle with the pi over 4 just by using uh, the one point that ours is given. Okay, well, guess what? Now it's your turn. We're going to go through, I want you to go through and figure out the sine of pi over 4, the cosine of 3 pi over 4. Well, how do we do that? I'm going to bring that picture up. So here's that unit circle we just completed. And, you know, I could easily just look at the unit circle and say, oh, the sine. Well, I remember that these coordinate points, x is the cosine and y is the sine, right? So I could go to pi over 4. I want the sine. It's this value right here, radical 2 over 2. All right, that's easy. Radical 2 over 2. And if I want the cosine, which is the same as the x value, for 3 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 is going all the way to here, right? So the cosine of this value would be negative radical 2 over 2. And so, you know, as you learn some of these, you, you can look at the unit circle. The sine of pi, it goes cosine sine. That would be 0, right? But ultimately what we want to do is we want to memorize these values. And so, yes, you can look at this when you figure it out. But no, it's not going to really help you. If you remember like in elementary school, remember you had those multiplication tables and your teacher would make you fill them all out. Okay. And then some of those, you know, this is true for every person. Some of those you didn't really memorize them well. And then you got to some math classes and more math. And if you don't know those values, it slows you down and it, and it really, really hurts you. So if you're taking pre-calculus, which you are, and you're going to take calculus, you're going to have to memorize these to the best of your ability. So why don't you go through, figure out the rest of these. Try not to look at the unit circle. Try to like visualize. Remember, cosine is x value, and then sine is y value, which is up and down. So try to figure that out. Um, don't be confused by negative, like negative 3 pi over 4. Well, let's just do these together. Why am I going to make you do all these when we have it? Like cosine is 7 pi over 4. That's down here, right? So the cosine is radical 2 over 2. Radical 2, that is an ugly radical 2, over 2. And then the sine, negative 3 pi over 4. Well, we're going negative. So this is negative 1 pi over 4. This is negative 2 pi over 4. This would be negative 3 pi over 4. That's the same as 5 pi over 4. Am I right? So the sine of that would be the y value, which is negative radical 2 over 2. And then lastly, we have the cosine of negative 7 pi over 4. So you'd have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It would be right here. The cosine is just radical 2 over 2. Well, that isn't too difficult, is it? But it is memorizing stuff. And guess what? It gets worse because we have another triangle as well. There are two special right triangles, and the other one was a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I'm going to draw this the way that we learned it in geometry or someone taught it to you, except it looks like it's real. That is a rough looking triangle. I just couldn't take it anymore. All right, let's put the 30 up here and the 60. Fix my triangle and made it pretty. Put a one down here. Here is the hypotenuse. Across from the hypotenuse is the two, and uh, across from the 30. When the 30 is the smallest angle, and so across from the smallest angle goes the smallest side. So the 1 has to go here because the 2 is here. The other number is a radical 3, and that's about 1.7, right? So that has to go across from, you know, the angle that's kind of in the middle. So that's where that goes there. But as I said, we're not thinking in degrees anymore. We're going to think in radians. So pi over 6 across from that's 1. Across from the pi over 3 is the radical 3. Okay, so that they match up, so that's easy to remember. And then across from the right angle is the 2. So we're going to try to figure out the sine of pi over 6. So the sine of pi over 6 is the opposite over the hypotenuse. That one's easy enough. The sine of pi over 3, opposite 
over hypotenuse. Easy enough. I don't need to rationalize because that radical is in the top. How about the cosine of pi over 6? Cosine. You ever wonder why it's called cosine? We have a sine and a cosine. The cosine of pi over 6 is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the cosine of pi over 3, that's right here, is still the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Did you notice that these kind of match up here and these will match up right there? All right, so if you can memorize one of these, you can figure out the other one because we only have a half in radical 3 over 2, and then they switch uh, for each other. So I guess the best way to remember this, I always remember this as, you know, the, the sine of pi over 6. Pi over 6, I just have that memorized as 30. You just got to put in your brain as 30, and then and it's a half, and that's that's what's in my brain. So then I remember that the cosine of pi over 3 would be a half. Uh, I don't know if that works for you, but guess what we're going to do? So we are going to fill out this unit circle with multiples of pi over 6. I'm going to get us started, and you're going to finish this off here. So let's get started with pi over 6. We know that pi over 6, it goes cosine sine, right? It goes cosine of theta, the unit circle does, and then the sine of theta. Because cosine of theta is x, and sine of theta is y. So I already know that the cosine of pi over 6 is radical 3, over 2. We just figured that out on the other page. All right, and then the sine of pi over 6 is 1 over 2. Okay, well, we know that, and now let's figure out the rest of our angles now. This is 1 pi over 6. If I go up another one, it's a multiple of pi over 6, so this would be 2 pi over 6, otherwise known as pi over 3, right? Because 2 over 6 is 1 third. 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6. So 4 pi over 6 is just 2 pi over 3. This is 5 pi over 6. This is 6 pi over 6. All right, I'm going to stop right there for a second because I'm going to have you do the rest of it. Uh, what else can we figure out here? It goes cosine sine. So this one would be 1 half and radical 3 over 2. That's based off of what we learned before. Okay, so... Now what? Now I can figure out these points because there's a symmetry that's involved with the y-axis. This is just a reflection across the y-axis right here. So instead of being 1 half radical 3 over 2, it would be negative 1 half. And then the y value stays the same, radical 3 over 2. All right? So I've given you one point. I've given you three points. I want you to pause the video and you figure out the rest of that unit circle. Ready, set, go. Okay, so hopefully you did as well as I did. I don't think I have any mistakes here. And as I said that, I'm looking, and I found a mistake already. I hope, oh man, I hope this should be negative down here, right? That's a y value. All right, so all my y values are negative down here. All my x values are negative on the left. All right, I think I'm pretty good right there. So those are all of the different multiples of pi over 6 and their corresponding cosine and sines, or the x and the y values. Easy enough. So now we can figure out some of these. The sine of negative pi over 6. So if I need my chart, negative pi over 6 would be this way. It's the same as 11 pi over 6. We want the sine. Remember, the sine is the y value. So I could say negative 1 half. And then I can go through, and I'm going to notice a little pattern. Negative 1 half. When I'm looking at my unit circle, do you notice that all the, the uh, denominators of 6 here, they're close to the x-axis? here and here, and their y values are all 1 half or negative 1 half. Those are all the different values that are pi over 6. But if you had one that reduced to like a pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3, do you notice how they have the same y values? We have radical 3 over 2, and the x values are the same as well. Okay, so we can start to learn that anything that's over pi over 6, the uh, the sign of it's going to be a half. So can I go through this and look at, oh, look at this. All right, well, I know the sine would be a half, so the cosine must be radical 3 over 2. And would this be positive or negative? Right? So it's cosine. The cosine is what? X or Y. So the cosine is the X. And this is on the left, so it would be a negative. So I figured out that one right there. Okay, let's knock the rest of these out. Cosine of pi over 3. Well, that's just, I mean, I, I don't want to say that's just 60 degrees, right? But the cosine is 60 degrees. We memorized that. That's 1 half sine of 2 pi over 3. 
Okay, try to think about where that would be. That would be in the second quadrant, right? And we want the y value, and it's a 3, so it's up a little higher than the, the 6 would be. What does Mr. Kelly mean about all that? So look, I know that the thirds, the y value is a little higher than it would be for the 6. So it's radical 3 over 2 instead of 1 over 2. There's got to be a way that we can make this stick and catch for you. That would be radical 3 over 2, like we said. All right, how about the cosine of negative pi over 2, which would be just negative 90. The cosine, remember, it's the x value. What's the x value of negative 90? So I go back here. What's the x value right here on this? It'd be right here. This is negative 90. What's the x value? Because it's cosine. The x value is 0. And lastly, the sine of 4 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3 would be all the way in the third quadrant, right? Where I know everything is negative, and this has got a 3 on it. And we're talking about sine, so it's going to be what? Negative radical 3 over 2. Um, I've pretty much, you know, it's taken me a while, but I've memorized all these. And it would be to your best interest to memorize all of them. Here's a unit circle for you. has everything on there, including the, the reminder that it goes cosine and then sine. We have our negative values here. I'm going to make sure we didn't forget any. These are all double negatives. These are all y's or negative. Okay, so the question becomes, tips and tricks. How can we remember how to fill this out. I mean, obviously memorizing all these things, this looks intimidating. So memorizing it can be a little bit difficult. So there is a pattern where every coordinate can be written as radical something over two, radical something over two. We start with zero and we count up. All right, here we go. Start with zero and count up. So this is zero over radical two. This is one over radical two. This is two over radical two. This is 3 over radical 2, and this is 4 over radical 2. Check that out. Some of these are going to reduce and simplify. Now, I'm going to do the same thing going down on this side. One, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, what do we get when we reduce all these? Okay, so I'll, I'll write the reductions in green. How about that? Square root of 4 is 2. 2 over 2 is 1, so we get the point 1, and the square root is 0, 0, so we get 1, 0. All right, that's pretty neat. We get radical 3 over 2. We get radical 1 over 2, but that's just that's just 1 over 2. So we get radical 3 over 2 and 1 half. Radical 2 over 2 and radical 2 over 2. We get another 1 half. That reduces, right? And radical 3 over 2. And then radical 4 is just 2. So 2 over 2 is 1. And that's going to give us a 0, so we get the point zero one. 1. Well, that's pretty fun. So that's one way we can do it. And, of course, these would all match, but they would be negative. It's the same way going all the way around. You start at 0. You can work up the y. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You do that over here as well. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then you work it down. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then you can simplify it. All right. The same thing works working down. 0, 1, 2, 3. Do the y values first. And the x coming back. So that's the pattern with the square root. Start at 0 and you count up. Now, if you also notice, all the angles that contain a 4 are halfway between the x and the y-axis. That's because it's half of 90 is 45 degrees, and that is pi over 4 is 45 degrees. So the 4s are right in the middle. Okay, so all that's where all the 4s are. All of the 6s in the denominator are one angle away from the x-axis. So that is a 6, that is a 6, here's a 6, and there's a 6. And that's, that's where all the 6s are. And likewise... All the threes are one angle away from the y-axis, so all the thirds, okay? And that's kind of how you can remember how to fill this all out, but it will take practice, and part of your homework is to fill that out. It's so pretty. Isn't that nice? That's it. Good luck. Go ahead and go through everything. Try to put it in your brain. This is Mr. Kelly. Remember, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. See ya!